So it's usually not a great idea to break laws, but breaking the laws of science is an exception. In fact, it's often how we make progress. See, scientific laws are just formulas that do a good job of describing how the stuff in the world interacts. Like, there are laws to describe how objects with mass attract or how objects with the same charge repel. And we call them laws because everything we observe seems to obey them. But even after laws are in place, scientists keep looking for conditions that break them. Because when laws break down, down, they almost always tell us something completely new about reality. In fact, there's one law scientists have been testing for over 200 years, even though it has never failed a test. Coulomb's law for the force between two charged particles. Because if it ever breaks, it could have an enormous impact on what we believe to be true about our universe, including concepts as fundamental as the speed of light. Coulomb's law was invented by the French physicist Charles Augustin de Coulomb in 1785. It describes the way force is related to the distance between two electrically charged particles. It says that as you increase the distance between two charged particles, the force between them drops off in a way that's proportional to to that distance, or radius squared. Which basically means that as the particles move farther apart, the force between them gets smaller fast. And generations of physicists have used and tested this formula, and it's never failed them. But history gives us a pretty good reason to keep testing the laws of physics, even the ones that have held up as long as this one. See, Coulomb's law looks a lot like another familiar law, one you've probably seen if you've taken high school physics, Newton's law of gravity. Like a lot of formulas in physics, they both have that radius squared in the bottom of their fractions, and they both describe how forces drop off with distance. And they do a really good job most of the Time. But back in the mid-1800s, astronomers discovered that the planet Mercury's orbit didn't quite follow Newton's law. Over time, the point where the planet passed closest to the Sun was happening at slightly different points in the orbit. And for a while, no one knew what to make of that. Some astronomers even suggested that there was a hidden planet tugging Mercury around. But another astronomer named Simon Newcomb attempted to fix Newton's law by tweaking that r-squared exponent. Instead of 2, he suggested that it could be 2.00000 001612. But even he knew that that was just a band-aid. Because sure, it helped solve the problem with Mercury, but it didn't address why Newton's law broke down. Then in 1915, Albert Einstein came up with his theory of general relativity, which fundamentally changed how we look at our universe. With general relativity, Einstein introduced the idea that mass warps space-time. And Newton's law doesn't quite cut it when you're near a very massive object that's warping the space-time around it. For example, the Sun. Newton's Newton's law broke down because he didn't have the full picture of how mass affects space-time. And that's a good reminder that things that we call laws work only under the right conditions. So when we find the conditions that break the law, we can learn some really radical things. So scientists have a decent reason to question Coulomb's law, which is almost a mirror image of Newton's. And they've put a ton of effort across centuries into testing it. One way physicists do that is by measuring the precision of that 2 in the exponent. Like what happened with Mercury, one sign of a problem in Coulomb's law would be if certain conditions required an exponent other than exactly 2. That could be a sign that the whole formula needs an overhaul. For now, it seems to be exactly 2, as close as we can tell. But scientists have been testing it ever since Coulomb published his law in 1785. In fact, Coulomb himself was already thinking about it. He knew his measurements couldn't prove that the exponent was exactly 2. There was some uncertainty. The exponent could be 2, plus or minus a smidge, and he put that smidge at 0 0.04. Over time, scientists designed better experiments with better equipment, and our confidence in the value of that 2 improved. In the 20th century, researchers shrank the smidge down to about 1 billionth. And today, it's less than a quadrillionth. That means we know that the exponent in Coulomb's law is 2 to nearly 20 digits. So Coulomb's law has stood the test of time so far. But if it ever does break down, it would mean our universe is wilder than even we realize. For example, physicists have shown that if Coulomb's law breaks, it would tell us that photons, or particles of light, have mass. Photons are what carry the electromagnetic force, which Coulomb's law describes. And theorists have shown that the exponent can only be 2 when the mass of a photon is exactly 0. And the inverse is also true. In a universe where that exponent is off by just a little, photons have mass. A really tiny mass, but mass nonetheless. And if that were the case, it would mean that photons can't travel at the speed of light, because nothing with mass can reach the speed of light. Meaning that light would not travel at the 
speed of light. That would change what we understand about how electricity, magnetism, and quantum mechanics are related, and it would likely take radically new ideas about reality to reconcile them. Seriously, the universe becomes a bizarre place if Coulomb's law breaks down, if that little number two has anything other than a bunch of zeros after it. And scientists have found a lot of zeros, but their job is to be skeptical and to test even the things they think are true. Because when laws break down, they show us the seams in our understanding of reality and force us to rethink the entire nature of our world. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like our episode about another law of physics, one that was made to be broken. You can check it out right after this. Thank you